ओके अगले क्वेश्चन पर चलते हैं सो फोर्टी वन ईयर ओल्ड पेशेंट सो फर्स्ट थिंट इज एज इट सेल्फ क्रॉनिक डायरिया फॉर थ्री मंथ सो क्रॉनिक डायरिया फॉर मोर देन थ्री मंथ सो अंडरस्टैंड दिस थिंग लाइक एक्यूट डायरिया इन नाइन्टी टू नाइन्टी फाइव परसेंट केसेज यू विल सी एक्यूट डायरिया इज ड्यू टू इन्फेक्शन मीन्स इट इज इन्फेक्टिव इन ऑरिजिन बट इफ इट इज क्रोनिक डायरिया इट कैन अकर ड्यू टू मेनी रीजन सो इफ आई सी दिस क्वेश्चन द फर्स्ट टेस्ट विच कम इन माई ब्रेन विल बी स्टूल टेस्ट so you will do stool test in any chronic diarrhea patient so off but that is unfortunately not given in the option so let us see like uh, d xylose absorption d xylose is uh, a carbohydrate based test so like it's a test we can do this uh, for proximal part of intestine whenever there is a problem in the proximal intestine so that is only for uh, proximal part and again this is uh, obsolete nowadays so we don't use this test coming to biopsy biopsy this is like, if i say If the question is given, what is the best test? Then answer could be biopsy. Coming to Schilling test, Schilling test we do for B12, B12 uh, deficiency. For B12 uh, deficiency we do Schilling test. Now they are asking you diarrhea. So understand this thing. Whenever you have a patient with chronic diarrhea, how you will suspect this patient? How you will approach this patient? So we will do normal routine test. I mean CBC, LFT, KFT, urine, RM, stool test. then uh, remember we will also check for certain other parameters like esr crp and even celiac serology celiac serology means what it includes celiac serology because prevalence of celiac spro is 1% even though like uh, uh, many uh, patient are uh, like uh, asymptomatic for many years so still 1% prevalence is huge so what we do first investigation is we should do celiac spro testing that is ttg so based on these option if i say the best answer in this question the probable answer could be c moving to next patient present with loss of tongue papilla mcv 100 hemoglobin 9.5 mcv 100 means macrocytic so macrocytic anemia again they are asking you first test first test will be serum b12 level brush biopsy not lev not needed folic acid levels again are not needed why because uh, you can see tongue papilla that is a hint so tongue tongue papilla uh, this loss of tongue papilla we see in b12 deficiency incision biopsy no so it is b12 estimation cushing ulcers are seen in stomach due to cushing is having s due to stress so due to stressed or raised icp or uh, i can say any uh, brain tumor or head trauma so it will be seen in stomach most common site of carcinoid so most common site of carcinoid the answer will be bronchus however bronchus is not given in the option so second common site will be ileum third common site will be appendix so let us see what it is given in the option rectum no stomach no appendix no answer will be ileum 45 year old male is brought to casualty after a night party age is the hint night party with complaint of epigastric pain epigastric pain penetrating towards back so whenever you see any abdominal pain uh, radiating towards back that's a case of pancreatitis so diagnosis will be it's a case of acute pancreatitis means party mein isne zyada pee li ab zyada pee li so it's a case of acute pancreatitis how we make a diagnosis ggt is for liver dysfunction so ggt basically it's a marker for a cholestasis in the liver alp is again for it is a more liver specific for a liver injury due to like hepatocyte damage due to viruses or due to some other reason cp can be is for heart so how we make a diagnosis serum like a simple gerd best diagnosed by so what is the best test suppose in the same question if they are asking you like uh, what is a uh, investigation of choice the answer will be upper ja endoscopy but best test will be 24 hours ph monitoring uh, if i ask you what is investigation of choice the answer will become upper ja endoscopy barium meal we do for uh, uh, intestinal problem barium swallow we can uh, use as a screening test for some of the disorders like achalasia cardia cereal is uh, not to be given in celiac spro so barley rye oat wheat this should not be given so wheat we should not give not to be given maize corn rice we can give rs rye remember in ulcerative colitis which is not true about malignancy understand this question Now again, it is uh, not actually a medicine question. It's a path question they are asking you. So you should know what is dangerous. So remember, most dangerous pre-malignant lesion is anaplasia. Anaplasia. Then next dangerous will be metaplasia. And next to this will be dysplasia. Remember, all other uh, after this it will it will be hyperplasia. 
so you should uh, notice like say, remember the sorry this anaplasia dysplasia then metaplasia just uh, i'm sorry for this anaplasia then dysplasia then metaplasia so the sequence you have to remember adam anaplasia dysplasia metaplasia so remember whether it is a low grade dysplasia or high grade dysplasia all these dysplasia are dangerous is it clear more dangerous than this will be anaplasia and pleomorphism is a feature of dysplasia and anaplasia so these three things are highly dangerous metaplasia is dangerous but not that dangerous as compared so they are asking you not true so metaplasia is generally not seen and it is not that dangerous as dysplasia and anaplasia and pleomorphism is a feature of dysplasia and anaplasia both iron absorption in the duodenum with fast clearance clear in jejunum we have absorption of folate in in ileum we have absorption of b12 enteric fever on fourth day now see the question fourth fourth day they are asking so how we diagnose enteric fever week by schedule so first week it is blood test second week agglutination test we call this vidal test third week stool test fourth week urine test so these are in weeks not not in days so when they are asking you first week so answer will be again so remember the mnemonic is basu so first fourth day means it is in the first week so answer will be blood test blood culture okay moving to next one following is seen in the image so what you can see this is what we call we call this uh, pipe stem colon it is a barium enema so again a spot of image based they can ask you an exam following is most probable diagnosis for this x-ray abdomen so what you can see in this x-ray can we see gas under diaphragm no so a bird beak volvulus not it is normal no it is uh, you can see adhesion and band so you can see multiple air fluid level so what is uh, this this is like uh, a cbd dilatation on ercp okay moving to next one again now now see now question is twisted investigation of choice they are asking so answer will be upper gyroscopy gold standard if i ask you gold standard test will be ph monitoring aspirin is given in management actually it is not given in management so correct question should be framed like this aspirin given in prophylaxis it should be given in prophylaxis of which cancer for colon cancer okay how to understand this just try to understand this so we have apc gene this apc gene apc gene will form polyp apc stand for adenomatous polyposis collagen then uh, we have a gene called keras gene so there is stimulation of keras gene so this polyp will increase in size then uh, we will notice there is a gene that is called a p53 gene this p53 so keras is proto oncogene so this gene will be activated p53 is uh, tumor suppressor gene so p53 gene will be inactivated so keras is activated so in activation of p53 what will happen this polyp this polyp will now convert into malignant polyp i am writing an m ultimately there is uh, uh, there is expression of an enzyme and that uh, enzyme is called cox cyclooxygenase then you will see patient will develop cancer so this is like you can see apc gene keras p53 cox colon cancer so you can see multiple things multiple things means multi step uh, carcinogen you can see in every step there is a carcinogen so if you give aspirin if you remember pharmacology here so aspirin is irreversible inhibitor of cox aspirin is irreversible inhibitor of cox so that is why it is protecting you from colon cancer simple cobblestone is even crohn disease right following is not true about crohn disease it can involve stomach and duodenum also crohn disease can involve any part from mouth to anus so it is it is a true statement hence it is wrong crohn disease can have skip lesion again a true crohn will have skip lesion so that is means uh, ulcerative colitis will have continuous lesion so it's also a true statement all layers are uh, of intestines are involved yes crohn disease is transmural so this is also a true statement is it clear so remember ulcerative colitis will involve mucosa and some mucosa only ulcerative colitis will have continuous lesion and remember all layers are uh, uh, not involved and ulcerative colitis will affect uh, colon and rectum more common will be rectum 
invasion of lymph node seen invasion of lymph node uh, can be seen when this crohn disease is have uh, converted into cancer only then otherwise it is not seen so answer will be this thing so crohn disease is pre malignant it is yet to become a cancer so uh, invasion of lymph node you will see when it is converted into cancer following is least likely to be seen in crohn disease least likely they are asking escape lesions are common fistulas are common transplant involvement common megacolon is not seen megacolon is a feature of ulcerative colitis smoking is protective ulcerative colitis simple even remember if i add few more thing in neurology parkinson disease in alzheimer it is now dangerous now considered dangerous previously it was protective bad is a vagus which can which cause bad is a vagus will cause adenocarcinoma simple but uh, remember a4 adeno a4 america so it is most common cancer in us the most common site will be lower one third squamous is more common uh, in upper and middle one third in upper and middle one third and this middle one third is most common site in india carcinoid is like like serotonin secreting tumor leiomyoma is benign tumor of esophagus so these are not the answer H. pylori can cause peptic ulcer, yes, all except maltomite can cause, yes, gastric cancer it can cause, yes, carcinoid tumor, no, it is due to serotonin. Traveler's diarrhea is caused by, the correct answer for this question should be E. coli, again which is not uh, given for Indian perspective scenario, it can occur due to salmonella, due to shigella, but uh, again foreign countries and uh, sometimes like uh, when you uh, travel to uh, uh, I can say Caucasian countries like Europe or America the most common cause will be Campylobacter. So this is like a US based question. So E. coli, Salmonella, Shigella these are common cause of traveler's diarrhea when you travel within India. But if you uh, uh, travel uh, beyond it's like some other places like for example I can say if you go to uh, Nepal then Cyclospora is common. If you go to Russia GRD is common. If you go to US Europe Campylobacter is common. So answer will be A. So I hope this is the discussion of GIT part. Soon I'll see you with the endocrine part. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.